Hi, everyone. It's Joe Chaffee, ssstormchasing.com, weatherlongisland.com, and meteorologist joechaffee.com. And who knows? There might be a new one coming up, too. It might be nycweathernow.com, but we'll get to that in the next come, uh, few weeks or so. Figure to check out the uh, weather this morning, and boy, have we, we already bounced up off the morning lows, uh, uh, which were down in the 50s. Uh, and low 60s in the warmer urban centers, uh, even a few upper 40s showing up in a lot of the cool spots. But we've already uh, seen those temperatures uh, bounce up into the low 70s. So we're going to tack on another 10 degrees to these numbers and make it up into the uh, low 80s, maybe even a few spots getting up to 84 or 5 this afternoon. Uh, and that probably sets us up for a very warm day uh, coming up tomorrow and also a more humid day. At least the humidity is still uh, quite comfortable uh, for today and we're starting to see on the uh, satellite uh, picture this morning um, a few uh, ch changes with this next cold front that's approaching so uh, we'll take a look at that here and uh, you, you can you can pretty well see what's happening um, let me just let's get a nice blue color the cold front is is back up through here at this point and it's producing some showers and storms we also have uh, uh, on this picture there's a little bit of tropical moisture here but this doesn't look to really get involved. Uh, the low levels of the atmosphere getting a southwest flow now. So that's bringing up, uh, going to slowly bring up the dew points and uh, bring up the humidity for a Wednesday. And then out in the ocean, way out in the ocean, uh, we have right here on the edge of the picture, Tropical Storm Ian. Uh, and that is, let's see if I can, there we go. And Ian is doing what it's been forecast to do for almost a week and a half now by computer models. Top winds are 45 miles an hour, and it's moving north and eventually will turn to the northeast. It might even strengthen a little bit before um, it does that. Uh, but top winds are 45 miles an hour. It's a very sheared-looking system when you take a look at it right out here. Uh, let me just I'll center this a little better. And uh, you can see by the uh, where the circulation center is, it, the circulation center is right there. All the big thunderstorms are north and east of the circulation center. So what we have is wind shear uh, that's going on, strong winds in the upper layers of the atmosphere. Let's do that in, in, in blue so we can kind of separate it out. But we have strong winds in the upper layers of the atmosphere blowing over the top uh, of the low level center and what that does is it basically rips the thunderstorms apart uh, and blows them out to the northeast so that you you never get the system to really really organize it never really develops a good solid core of thunderstorms so it pretty much remains uh, a sheared system uh, we uh, have uh, a little bit of disturbed weather uh, back through uh, here, back through Florida, as we said, pointed out. Also, there's a still a there's a weak low that's in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and that's moving westward. But that uh, doesn't look like uh, it's going to develop into anything. And we do, by the way, also have a, a new weather system that's coming off the African coast. You can kind of see it here. Let me move myself out of the way, and uh, you can uh, just begin to see it on the uh, edge of the picture. Uh, moving westward. Uh, so we're going to watch that one too as it moves out. Uh, now as we look at the metal weather models going forward, kind of a interesting scenario has uh, has developed a bit. So we'll take a look at this and let me get myself out of the way. I'll put myself, you know, down in the corner somewhere. So let's uh, adjust. Okay, so here's what we have as we look at the uh, GFS model. And you've got this weather front that front that comes through here uh, Wednesday night. Maybe a shower or a thunderstorm with that. Not really impressive. Big high builds in. We get a nice shot of cool air that takes us into the weekend. Then we warm up and turn more humid again as we go through the weekend. And here comes another cold front for Sunday right through here. And now we're at um, late Sunday night. And I'll just show you. We'll uh, draw in the fronts here. So we got this cold front right through there. So we might get some showers with that. And then behind it, there's a high, but uh, it's not really all that strong. So I'm not really too impressed with it. And that's going to eventually move out overhead. So it gets a little cooler and drier behind this front, but not much. And in fact, as we move into Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we've got another big ridge that builds in. So later next week, uh, it could get very warm or even hot. 
uh, and humid <clears throat> going into um, the following weekend. Now, here's where the long-range swirliness comes in because we're already out 10 days. But uh, all the models actually show some variation of this uh, with a, a, a front that's approaching um, the East Coast. And you can see it right there. And the models all have some kind of tropical system nearby. Now, this would take it out north and northeast as it, it moves out. And again, we're in what I would call squirrely land. We're 11 days out here. So, uh, but, you know, all the models have some semblance of this. So, I, when it does that, I kind of want to pay a little bit of attention uh, to it uh, because, you know, it could be signaling something here. Uh, in the longer term that we might have to keep our eyes on. So what's happening is, and I'll, I'll, um, I'll go to a wider region. We can look at the upper air. You know, the um, models, the GFS model and has been kind of telegraphing some kind of trough, some kind of deep trough uh, in the east uh, for later next week for a few days now. And it kind of lifts it up and out. And then you still got troughiness that it sort of hangs around in, in, in eastern Canada. So this is a bit of a a cooler flow that sets up for the end of the month so it it's, it went back to this idea now when we look at the european model going out uh for that 10-day period it's much flatter and also it's so it's different out in the atlantic and it, it has that system but it it still has this weakness in the subtropical ridge and if you watch it there this would be a tropical system that it recurves out and turns to the northeast um, the Canadian kind of splits the difference where it has a stronger ridge, but not quite as strong as the GFS. And that's the other odd thing in this particular run that I thought was um, pretty interesting was that uh, the GFS model actually has, of, of all the models, has a very strong ridge that builds here in the eastern states and the other models don't have it. So uh, usually that that's in reverse where the European has that stronger ridge and tries to... Um, uh, make the the, uh, the case for uh, heat and humidity, and the GFS kind of comes along over time. So on this particular run, there are some interesting discrepancies that I think we're going to need to look at longer term. So there you have it for the day. Uh, have a great uh, Tuesday and a great uh, rest of your week. I will be back uh, tomorrow. We'll look start looking ahead toward the weekend. We'll look at the tropics. We'll do all the things that we need to do. And uh, don't forget... Uh, ssstormchasing.com, meteorologistjoechoppy.com, weatherlongisland.com, and also uh, you can go and like my Facebook page, which is Meteorologist Joe Choppy. Have a great day.